Okay, anyway, so, um, yeah, so uh, I saw that you spoke with Brandon, and uh, I know you should Mm hmm. Yeah, by video. Yeah, it's a, yeah. a connection problem. We got a connection problem? No, it, you're back. I can see you now. You, wait, yeah, wait. sorry, I switched, the, switched to another app by accident. Um, yeah, I figured why don't we just talk instead of like messaging back and forth. Um, so. Yeah, it's still, still a little choppy. It's going in and out. Freezing. You're still freezing. It's weird. Yeah, I'm, uh, it's fine right now, though. Moment. Uh, okay. Well, all right. So, um, tell me about uh, tell me about proximity. Am I pronouncing it right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's, okay. Uh, I don't know yeah. if you did. You have a chance to look at the video or not? But basically, it's a mobile application that uh, interacts with yeah. the world around you in real time, like we talked about. Um, it allows you uh -huh. to network with all the people in the room. You're able to snag all the information that they that they make public with one button. So instead of me asking you, you know, what's your LinkedIn, what's your email, let me get your phone number. That stuff takes minutes and minutes. Yeah. Plus people yell it out across the room and the Instagram URL is different from Twitter. So we've simplified that down to just, you know, two clicks. Click on their profile, click connect. And you have that information there in your directory. So that's how pe people will be able to use the application for various facets. That's the, the primary functioning for it. Um, the monetizing way is to connect to businesses um, nearby or the ones that you mark as favorites to increase impulse buys, um, you know, through pay per clicks, uh, in app SEO, et cetera. So the same way that you can search for businesses, I mean, for people, you can search for businesses. <laughs> It's free right now if you if you uh if you're talking. I'll let you know when it's back up. You're back. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, um, were, were okay. You, you able to hear everything? Yeah. I can, yeah. I, I think I heard everything. So, um, but what is the, like, I'm user zero or user one, sorry. What is my, um, why do I get the app? If you're the first user with the application? Yeah. Well, you, you're probably the first, but let's say I'm user two. Why yeah. do I get the app? Yeah. So if you're the first user with the application, um, yeah. You know, of course, you have to wait for the community to grow. That's why our primary marketing strategy is the Internet. So people already had an application before they go to events. Um, but before right. before waiting on the community to grow, your primary usage would be the business aspect. So just utilizing discounts, deals, um, you know, retail, fast food, however you choose to use it in the business search. Um even like Siri, when I use Siri, a lot of times it doesn't pick up the restaurants that I needed to pick up. And in our application, when you click on businesses, it will pick up all of the businesses nearby. Um, you know, you can just click and see where you want to eat. Uh, right. You know, you can see all the different reviews, just like Yelp, but it comes right. Does up this already work? Mm -hmm. Is it already built? Yeah, it's uh, um, the, the beta is up right now on Android. The iOS one isn't up, but uh, we're doing private beta for that one. But the Android one is still up. Um, and does that have all the business information now, or are you trying to add that slowly? Or yeah, what? just just ignore the UI because it, it, it's old, and you know we just have to have you know get everything funded to get everything cleaned up. But yeah, it works. The business side works. 
Um, it shows the different categories at the bottom, but it picks it up what? based on where you are and it'll pick up what's around there by category. Okay, so so how does it get that info? Uh, Google API. Google API, so it's, okay, so it's like searching Google Maps for what's nearby and what, and it's looking for businesses with coupons? Yeah, so basically what our goal is, so our goal for the companies that would be paying for them, right now it's not like that, but what we wanted is the businesses that will actually appear are the ones that, um, so let's just say we do mom and pop shop. Let's just call it, you know, Matt's coffee shop. Uh, yeah. Matt's coffee shop. We'll put, get that in a directory of our application. Cause ultimately we want to build out our own geolocation, but basically when they click on Matt's coffee shop, you'll get yeah. a paper per click because they clicked on your deal, to, you know, uh, such and such off coffee or something just to get those new customers into your business. But right, but right now, Mark. like say I say I download the Android app right now. Mm -hmm. What uh, it has it has a list of coupons on there now, right? Is that no, it just it just picks up the businesses, so you can call them. You can you know if you like for instance, I was trying to find I was downtown and I was trying to find somewhere to eat, but it was Siri was only picking up one place when I asked her find me fast food when I used my app it show this Chinese restaurant, this restaurant, all the ones that were closest to me, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 miles. And then I clicked on it and I can GPS it and go to that place where I wanted to eat. Is that be better than Yelp? Based on the location, in my opinion, yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Does it, I mean, Yelp, obviously they have, they've been around longer and they, they can, they have more resources to, you know, tight, tight knit their application. Yeah. They're already there. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. But I'm just trying to think like why. So, so you're pulling this data that's useful. So it's, it's an app that's useful in the sense that you can, you can, um, uh, find uh, business like places to eat, things like that around, around you. It's freezing. Say something. Yeah, can you hear my voice? You're back now. Oh, You're okay. back. Okay. okay. Um, so, so it's kind of useful in the sense that you can do the things that you can do in Yelp now or where are you take like where, let's say now there are a hundred users or a thousand users or something like that how is it useful now in a different way than it is on day one say it say it again how would it be useful so so right right now it's useful in the sense that you can find places to eat and stuff like that right but that's kind of like it's already served by yelp and really like you know uh, it's not it's not like a massive selling point on it. It's free, freezing.
You're back. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying again. I don't know what's going on. It seems like my connection only works when I drive around. This is. Um, it's uh, no problem. There we but, um, <laughs> anyway, just shout shout if my connection goes out again. Okay, so what I was saying was, I understand the, I understand how it's useful in a in a kind of sort of way with almost mm -hmm. zero users. But when you have, say, on a the, thousand the users, side. then how is it useful? Well, uh, as a user, like as someone who wants the app, I understand that if you have a lot of people on the on the app and you have like, you know, it's based on location. Right. There are just so many ways you can monetize. I mean, just so many ways. So I don't really have any questions about that. I'm just thinking more from the point of view of the users, you know, like, so as... As um, yeah. What is the purpose? Yeah. Well, so what is the purpose the of me side, having the app if there are a thousand? Let's just say users? you're a club promoter, right? Well, let's just say um. Uh, so we have different features, right? That are as we're going to scale, right? Like for instance, yeah. a live chat room. Let's just say it's five hundred okay. of us in a room. We already have the app. We can talk amongst each other while someone on stage is pitching. That new company on stage can be found all of their information they'll leave the show right. with people in the crowd that can now follow them because they like what they see and we can discuss it amongst each other the same way um there's a comedian named rodney perry who has the app he um he's been in a lot of tyler perry movies or whatever but he said a lot of comedians have a hard time when they do shows getting the people to follow them in the crowd because they say oh man i was just that guy that was funny on that tuesday but now um, there's always some new act. There's always someone new to meet where you like what they're doing on stage or you meet them at an event that, that you don't know. You can get their information. Now that comedian can leave the show with the 400 people in the crowd that thought he was funny. So you pass them the literature as they walk in, you know, while they're sitting down, they download the app before the show starts. And as soon as they get up there to perform, that comedian can now take that traction with them. Hopefully you heard me. Cause and, it's uh, frozen again? No, you're good right now. Were you able oh, to hear okay. everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, so, froze. Maybe I'm selling it right, but man. To me, it was like trying to get people to understand that concept. It's just yeah, I think have you had any traction with that, getting people to um, yeah, some something that's truly disruptive takes time, man. Um, you know, I, I think uh, what Google Glass is trying to do, you know, there it's going to swing back again, and it's going to happen. Something truly disruptive people have to be ready to be receptive to it. But um, it, it takes time, but it's, a, it's really a no-brainer concept, truly. It's a no-brainer concept as a feature. Or, like, this is the, the conclusion I came to when I was working on, on a project like that was that, that it, would, it would take a lot of effort because you have to get a lot of people, not, not a lot of people worldwide on your app. You have to get a lot of people in one room on your app which is more of a challenge because like half the people in the room will not be have any interest in downloading a new app. You know, like maybe you and I, like I try out any app that comes my way. I'm, I like it, but I don't think most people want another app on their phone. And um, uh, yeah, so that's the challenge, right? Like how do you get them to really, why, why are they downloading the app? And I don't think it's going to be to connect with the comedian. Uh, it, if the if the venue is giving discounts, like if the venue is giving like free drinks or something, maybe. Well, right? I'll, I'll give, give you some like example, that. right? Um, I talked to Mark Cuban last week, and Mark oh, wow. Cuban and Arthur Blank that lives here, who's the owner of the Falcons, were working on some things. To well, I'm trying to work on some things, waiting on to get a second reply from him. 
but basically to get something going like mm-hmm. you're talking about in those arenas. So those pre-preliminary conversations mm-hmm. with it, those are happening. No, let's go. Let's go. We'll see. I mean, it's early. I mean, it's, you know, it's just very, very succinct conversation, but we'll see. But he- Why are you raising so much right now? It looked like you're raising, what is it, 5 million for 35%? It sounds like a lot for the stage um, you're at. Yeah, and it, we've always been uh, asking for way less. You know, we've always been in the, um, you know, 100,000 range. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, we're from Detroit. We know how to hustle, man. We can do a lot with 50,000. Uh, like I sent Brandon one for 50,000. He was saying the exact same thing that you were saying. But different people we were talking mm-hmm. to, they were saying that wasn't going to get it done. And Everyone has their opinions. We've had people that say, we're not you're right, you're anything. Right. If it's yeah. not five million, we don't take you serious. And then we go talk to someone else, and they say you're only asking four hundred thousand. That's not going to cut it. And, and everyone is being these experts and all this kind of stuff. And we've went right in between, right at the beginning. You know that's too low, ten thousand. That's not enough. Or we've done them all, and we've all got bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So it's really yeah. no. It's hard to. We just know that that will give us time to not have to work a job, fully commit to it, travel. Uh, if we had to bring in a staff, we can we can house all of that information and get it done because we're ready, man. We just need someone to believe in it. I'm with you. Okay. Uh, well, I'll check out your uh, I'll check out your app on Android. I don't have an Android phone with me, but uh, yeah. when I get Somewhere, I I have look, an, I, look I at our, have you know, at least our pitch deck, everything is updated. I, it's what we have up is so old, man. It, it's you know, you have to really just ignore it, but yeah. <laughs> I think it's uh, I think it's a hard uh, it's a hard one to get momentum in, but um, and I also think I think like Facebook's like the ultimate competitor for everyone, right? Every time someone creates a good product, Facebook comes along and copies it and steals well, the they, audience. They I both. think, like, since Facebook's installed on every device, it's very tough to avoid the idea that they can just send alerts when you're nearby and stuff like that. Well, I mean, um, it's the nature of the beast, you know? I mean, Snapchat came out. They, they, nice. they did offer Snapchat $3 billion, and then Snapchat denied mm-hmm. it, and then they came out with Poke, which was their own version of Snapchat, and they failed. You know, so, I mean... At least, right. at least, right. at least, Snapchat got an offer. You know what I'm saying? If if we join forces and Facebook came to us and said we'll give you four billion for it, you know, sayonara. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, well, all right. So I will, uh, yeah, post the link to your uh, your um, pitch deck in here, and then uh, I'll I'll take a look at that, and then I'll I'll take a look at the Android app as well, and uh, you know, I mean at this. I guess in the end it comes down to it comes down to traction. It sounds like it's I don't know, do you have like do you have like real traction? Like how many installs do you have with the Android? You you yeah. kind of it sounds like you're you're not even iOS. pushing that on so Android much. is way less than huh? iOS. But the I would say like eighty percent was on iOS. It's a thousand users, but Android is practically nothing on there. Um, you know, maybe like a maybe a hundred to 200 maybe you know what i'm saying the rest are on ios so how many how many uh so uh, but that's all beta right that's actually quite impressive to get that number of beta users no you know that's yeah. very we start we stopped our marketing because the app the visual aspect the ux and everything isn't market ready so we we you know we want to come correct we just did the beta part just to kind of get feedback but we didn't you know it's kind of like private marketing almost you know what i mean like soft launching getting that feedback and um you know we have the can you get me the, uh can you get me on the beta hmm? if i send you my email address can you put me on the beta so i can check that out uh-huh. ios okay yeah. i'll do that yeah. i'll send you that okay, uh, cool. iphone yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll send yeah. me your uh i'll need your udid oh yeah yeah that's true well what are you using you using crashlytics or test, test flight, flight or what uh okay all right, all right i'll find them yeah i'll send that cool okay all right man. uh yeah so cool yeah thanks i'll all talk right. to you talk again to you appreciate it